What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and in today's video we're going to be doing a full showcase video for the brand newly released version 3, version 2, quick Whitebeard. Now this character, I just made a video about him uh, literally yesterday or the day before uh, discussing, you know, how to build teams with him, how to best utilize this character. So if you guys haven't seen that video yet, click the card at the top of the video. It'll link you over to that video, gives you guys a full in-depth analysis as to what kind of characters are going to help you build better teams with this particular character. However, in this video, I want to directly showcase exactly how I've been using the character over the past, you know, couple weeks since we've had him. And he's actually been a ton of fun to use. So we're going to be having four different clips in this video against two Colosseum bosses, a training forest, and we're also going to be using him in the Garp challenge as well. So there's lots of different examples showing off this character and how good he can potentially be. So before we get into that, I want to go ahead and break down the character himself, version 3 Whitebeard. So this character is a quick powerhouse striker, and you can see his max stats there are pretty insane. 5400 HP, 1940 attack, and 240 one recovery. Captain effect is going to reduce your cooldowns by one at the start. Obviously with double white beard, that's a double uh, two turn reduction of cooldowns, which is fantastic. And then four turns with sockets. So yeah, he, you're going to be getting a lot of cooldown reduction with this character at the start of the fight. And then he boosts two separate classes, striker and powerhouse characters attack, depending on how much health you have remaining. It's a scaling factor, meaning at full health, you'll have 2.5 times attack. And at one HP, you'll have 4.5 times attack. As I said, it is a scaling factor which means that it will scale in between so if you're at half health it's 3.5 multiplier so you can get some pretty interesting damage output with this character and it is kind of tricky to use because you do have to manage your HP when you're using this character uh, in order to use him you know effectively but on top of this as well he also reduces damage taken by 20% that's actually quite key as well especially if you are playing around those really low HP thresholds you need to make sure that you can help reduce some damage output now speaking of damage reduction he will have that kind of ability with his special effect as as well. Special ability maxing at 13 turns will deal 400,000 fixed damage to one single enemy that ignores all defensive effects which includes barriers and stuff like that. Absolutely amazing and that's going to be kind of key actually uh, when we go into one of the training forests having that 400,000 fixed damage is actually stupidly amazing. On top of this he also boosts your chain multiplier by 0.7 for a turn and will double the attack of striker and powerhouse characters. So he is his crew's own two times attack multiplier multiplier booster as well as providing a bit of a chain boost so if you guys are very similar or very uh you know well in tune with some of the characters in the game you guys would realize that this is a very similar type of boost to what version 2 shanks gives to his team so very interesting that it's a kind of a different parallel between v2 shanks and this white bid character and he does have an added effect with his special ability in that when you activate the special and you're below 30 percent health he will go ahead and reduce damage taken by 95 percent for one turn which you're going to be seeing that's going to be so so, so key in a lot of different fights with this Whitebeard character and he also has the ability to reduce despair by 20 turns when you're below 30% when you activate the special ability so his captain and special ability alone are fantastic this guy is easily a tier 1 character I wouldn't say he's tier 0 just because he does have a couple of nitpicks that are making him a little bit more annoying to use and we'll discuss that in this video um, but overall he's just a fantastic well-built character now in terms of his crewmate abilities his first one will state that he cannot be blown away you won't see too many situations where that's going to be useful but it's nice that he does have it and his secondary one will boost all characters attack by 70 so you get a little bit of an increase of attack as a subunit now in terms of his uh potential abilities from his limit break his first one is a critical hit increasing the amount of damage he gets by seven percent at a 50 percent rate i would have loved it if there was a 90 percent for 10 percent extra but it's still quite fine you know critical hit is about average for this character he gets slop iron reduction by 10 turns would have been amazing if he completely got rid of that and and his last one is the Enrage, which is his best ability in my eyes. 300 additional attack at max for his Enrage effect, which is actually pretty substantial. Uh, so anyways, that's been the full breakdown of the quick white bid character. Now let's get into the showcase video. So as I said, there's going to be four different clips that you guys are going to be seeing in this video. Timestamps to those clips will be down below in the description. The first one here you're seeing is going to be against Colosseum Daifuku. This is the exact same clip that I used in my actual upload of beating Colosseum Daifuku. So for those of you who have actually seen that video, you guys are getting a little bit of a rehash with this particular clip. But I was pretty happy with this team, was able to beat it reasonably well. Hopefully you guys actually went ahead and farmed up the Colosseum Daifuku whilst the anniversary ship was live. So, so let's actually get into discussing 
discussing uh, this brand new Whitebeard character. Now, as we've already discussed, we just went through like what he actually does, but how does he actually feel when you play with him, right? So you just got to think, right, if you start off with half health with the Moby Dick ship, which is the most useful ship, I would say, for the new Whitebeard character, you're going to be starting off at a 3.5 times multiplier, which is actually pretty substantial. If you guys have ever played around with characters kind of like, you know, V2 Shanks, I guess he's kind of similar to V2 Shanks in a way, just because with the captain ability, you can get around that 3.5 times at the start of the fight, and the special ability somewhat can give you similar damage output not as much as shanks because shanks obviously is a higher type boost and a higher chain boost but you know he has the same sort of structure of his special ability alone now i've got to say whenever you use that special of white bid you deal so much goddamn damage and that's going to really shine in the final clip of the video where we go up against the garp challenge the just using the white bid special alone adds ridiculous amounts of damage output in the garp challenge so the two other clips that you guys are going to be seeing as well, other than the Garp Challenge and this clip right here, is going to be against Colosseum Pedro. And the, Colosseum Pedro is kind of like where it shines, where his special ability is also so good because it gives you that damage reduction effect. With the actual end of turn healing with the Log Ace character and the damage reduction from Whitebeard special ability, you are actually able to tank the death damage hit from Colosseum Pedro, which is pretty substantial. We already know how powerful that death damage hit can be. And not a lot of characters can kind of tank that as well as what this white bid character can actually do. It's pretty insane how good it actually is. So yeah, the Log Ace and Log Vivia that came out with the actual release of the white bid character are great candidates to run as subunits on the white bit team because not only do they allow you to reduce your health, but they have really beneficial effects that kind of enhance the usability of version 3 white beard. And as for the last clip you guys are going to be seeing in this video, it's going to be against the Training Forest Blackbeard. Now, I definitely wanted to include a Training Forest clip in this particular video of showcasing how he deals with Training Forest, and he actually does it reasonably well. I was actually pleasantly surprised to note that, yes, he actually does Training Forest very, very well, because if you are able to just maintain the fact that you're going to be at, like, reasonably low health, if you can stay just below half health most of the time, that multiplier, you know, being above 3.5 is going to be enough to KO lots of enemies. The thing is, is I didn't actually challenge a forest that has lots of mob characters surrounding, you know, kind of like, you know, if you go back to, I don't know, like the Boa Forest, where you have like multiple rooms with like five or six bosses on them. Not really too sure how Whitebeard would go with those. I guess you could use characters like Log Kid to just en enable you to just deal lots of damage to those mob characters. But uh, in the Blackbeard Training Forest, you don't really see that that often, where you have multiple mob characters on a final boss stage. Uh, so, you know, the, the Whitebeard team actually does it, you know, reasonably well also got to note that treasure map nl is such a phenomenal character to be running as a sub unit on white bit teams as well especially on some really long stages like training forests because having that ability to just ko an entire room is ridiculously useful and also with his sailor ability the fact that he can get constant cool cooldown reduction on himself so then you can use it once again in the same run is just phenomenal at a 15 turn cooldown you think you know you can only really use it once in a run you're not going to be seeing too much usage out of it but that sailor ability is so amazing with treasure map nl and he's definitely a key unit that i would suggest you guys to have maxed out ready for whitebeard teams Speaking of Treasure Map, Treasure Map Big Mom is also going to be highlighted a lot uh, with the White Beard, of course, because she is a pure powerhouse unit and fits perfectly on the White Beard teams. Now, through utilizing White Beard a little bit, I have noticed that getting matching orbs can be quite a struggle for White Beard teams. However, Big Mom kind of fixes that issue because she gives you the full board of G orbs and gives you all those different boosts. Now, unfortunately, you can't really use the Big Mom special and the White Beard special to get the White Beard type boost and then the effects of Big Mom. That would be phenomenal but you can still use your big mom special and then the white bit special on top of that to get the damage reduction and also get the chain boost that he provides as well so that is a really nice combination that you could also do unless if you wanted to bring a character that could shuffle your orbs around or characters that change g orbs into matching there's not really much else you can do however with the high multiplier that white bit has you know up to 4.5 times multiplier that straight effect from Big Mom's special ability is going to be enough most of the time to KO a lot of different bosses in the game. 
Now, team building for raid bosses and coliseums is actually relatively straightforward with Whitebeard. You most of the time on really like quick pieces of content like raids and coliseums, you probably want to be having some sort of health cutter so you can speed through the content quick and quickly cut your health down and then KO the enemy. However, as you guys are going to be seeing in the training forest clip and also in the Garp challenge clip, we don't really need a health cutter because, well, Garp will automatically will go ahead and cut your health at the start of the run. But also for the training forest, you kind of want to rely on the enemies just dealing damage to you and kind of you bringing other characters that can help support your whole team. Uh, you don't really need health cutters on uh, really long pieces of content like training forest and such. But going back to the point that I made earlier, Whitebeard kind of struggles getting some matching orbs. You definitely need to bring some sort of characters that can manipulate your orbs around, I would say, uh, to actually deal like lots of damage to the enemy. And that's why Big Mom is honestly so good. We've already said that. But you could also bring some other characters that have like sailor abilities that can help you get some more matching orbs. Namely, one of the good characters is Legend Nami. She has one of the best specials in the game, providing an orb boost and a color affinity boost. Obviously, your characters need to make sure that they have one of those secondary classes classes which are driven powerhouse cerebral and free spirit and then they'll get that boost and also legend nami has that effect where she treats dex orbs as beneficial to your entire team so that is also a very very key unit you know or just any unit in general that has a sailor ability that treats one orb as beneficial or multiple orbs as beneficial for an entire class or an entire color that type of unit is going to be useful and legend nami does that for whitebeard team because she is a striker unit she can be used with whitebeard teams has an amazing special and a very very supportive uh, crewmate effect but if you guys want to see more examples of characters that are going to be useful with this Wipe It character, I highly suggest to go ahead and check out the how-to video that I made a couple of days ago. That's going to give you a little bit more insight into direct characters that you can kind of think of to use with Whitebeard. Now, in the short time that I've been using him, I, I've absolutely adored using this character. He is so much fun to use. The amount of damage that you can get, like, you don't even have to be at 1 HP to just get some insane damage output. If you're just below 50%, as I said a little earlier, being below 50% is more than enough in most cases to KO a lot of different bosses, because you got to think, 3.5 is 50%. So, you know, if you're at 25%, that's four times attack boost to your striker and powerhouse characters. So, yeah, he, he does a lot of damage, right? Um, but in the short time that I have been using him, he definitely does have flaws. Obviously, him being a, an HP-based captain is going to be quite annoying to use because you do have to manage your health a lot. You need to make sure that you are not going to die. Like this stage right here on the training forest, if I take too many hits, I am going to die here. So uh, definitely taking out the characters that have uh, the lowest cooldown are going to be quite beneficial here, of course. And it also is going to be quite key, obviously, to pick up recovery orbs when you need them. Obviously, if a character gets more damage output, the lower the health is, you typically don't want to pick up recovery orbs. But, you know, picking up those recovery orbs at times is going to be a thing that you're going to need to do. And that, that really comes down to experience and understanding where damage is going to be dealt, how much damage characters do. But one of the great things about Whitebeard, though, is you can kind of manage that a little bit easier because he does provide the 20% damage reduction with his captain effect. Meaning with double Whitebeard, you get around 36% damage reduction and you add sockets on top of that. It scales up to like about 40%, which is pretty insane to take 40% less damage just passively all the time. It's actually ridiculous. But definitely one of the most annoying things about him is the fact that getting matching orbs just naturally can be an issue. And I have seen some people go ahead and socket out Whitebeard with orb sockets. My one personally does have orb sockets as well. I don't really like orb sockets that much because it is all RNG at the end of the day. Uh, but most of the time I do socket out characters with damage reduction. And that's the main reason why I put orbs on Whitebeard because I kind of rely on my subs and sometimes my friend captain to have the damage reduction sockets to assist me in taking less damage. And I feel like that damage reduction overall is just a more useful effect to have because it's not an RNG effect that you have to rely on on you know, percentages to get a damage reduction. You're always going to get the damage reduction no matter what when you have those sockets active. However, you're gonna, you can have those orb sockets active and you're not guaranteed to get matching orbs all the time. It does obviously increase the chances uh, and, and it's going to help out in some cases, but in some other cases, it is going to ruin your run. So that is kind of the thing in my whole like ideology of me socketing characters and a lot of people ask me like what are the best sockets for x character and typically you know it really comes down to what the character is like a character like hody jones 
Uh, he doesn't really need damage reduction because if you're trying to tank hits with Hardy Jones as a captain, you don't really want to do that that often. You typically are just using him for speed farming and, you know, getting more matching orbs is going to be more beneficial for you. Plus, his special ability grants you a 90% damage reduction, which in most cases is enough to tank like most hits anyway. So you don't really need damage reduction on Hody Jones teams in my eyes. But in like, in, in a lot of cases, like just damage reduction is going to be your best case. Uh, and there are very specific characters that would need orb sockets. And, you know, I, I don't really want to go into that in this video, but yeah, it's very, very specific. And I think Whitebeard, honestly, might be one of those characters that you might want to invest orb sockets into just because naturally he does not grant you that many matching orbs he doesn't have any ability with his captain or his special ability that gives you more matching orbs and that kind of is kind of a downfall Either way though, the short time that I've had access to this character, I've absolutely loved using him. And for all of you guys out there that do have V3 Whitebeard, be very happy because he is such a powerful legend. And to think that he's actually guaranteed, he was guaranteed in the anniversary Sugo Fest. And I feel like it is definitely worth those nine multis to go ahead and get him. He is just a powerhouse of a character that is going to enable you to just beat content not only beat content uh and do a lot of damage to the boss but you're going to be doing it at a reasonable pace as well with his cooldown reduction and i already discussed in my how-to video of some couple of speed farming options that you could opt to run if you want to just speed farm some high level content with uh, like a striker based team with whitebeard it is definitely possible but that's the full breakdown in my showcase of version 3 whitebeard hopefully you guys did enjoy the video i'm going to leave you guys here with the clip of me beating the gark challenge with version 3 Whitebeard and hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.